Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting Arkham Horror List video. I just wanted to say uh, this idea it was brought to you by someone in chat. Um, then this is kind of like a new series. I don't really know what's going to happen with it or how much I'm going to do with it. But um, if there's interest, I'll do more. If there's more cards you want to see, I'll do more. If you want me to keep going through all this, I'll do more. Once again, all of this is decided by you. And also, don't scream. I have shaved my mustache, so I look a little bit different, but don't scream. It's, I'm still the same Justin. So, uh, in this series I, uh, that I'm calling Delve Too Deep because ha ha ha, card names, it's funny, and we all love that. Uh, we're going to be talking about how useful Mind Wipe um, uh, is in the Dunwich Legacy. Uh, sorry, the Dunwich Legacy. Uh, so Mind Wipe is a one experience, one cost uh, mystic spell that commits for a brain and a fist, but we're not looking about that. We're looking at the text box. Fast, play after, uh, phase begins. Choose a non-elite enemy at your location. Treat the chosen enemy's printed text box as if it was blank, except for traits until the end of the phase. So this includes stuff like victory. Um, it includes vengeance, but vengeance isn't relevant in Delve Too Deep. Uh, and it gets rid of um, their, just their text box. Their text box is blank. Um, we have Mind Wipe, uh, the three, level 3 one, which is uh, from, so Mind Wipe 1 is from the core set. Mind Wipe 3 is Return to the Night of the Zealot, so the Return to core set. It's a 3 experience, 1 cost uh, spell event for Mystic. Fast, play after a phase begins. Choose a non-elite enemy at your location. Until the end of the phase, reduce the chosen enemy's damage and horror values by 1, and treat its printed text box as if it were blank. So, let's uh, go to the next slide which we're going to talk about how we're going to be rating these cards. You can see just below me, there are the two, um, <clears throat> the two cards just that are going to be there the whole time. Uh, and we're going to be looking at the, the level one does the majority of the lifting. The level three actually only cares about, as you can see listed here on the rating scale, the horror and the damage. So the first thing we're going to be looking at in the majority of the rating scale is the relevant text, if it's stopping that. Uh, if it stops retaliate, which yes, you can consider to be relevant text, but I do think it's small enough that, not small enough, re retaliate is a nice thing to get rid of. So I think it's something to look at here. Massive, you can also get rid of massive, massive. So that essentially is like a free engage action, but it also means that anyone else at the location can just walk away. So your clue getter can walk away. So massive is something that we should be rating here as well. Aloof, it's a free engage. Is that good for one experience and uh, a card? Maybe, maybe not. It really depends on the situation. Uh, and because that this can trigger um, in multiple, you can do that in when any phase begins. So this can be the mythos phase uh, or the enemy phase. So we have mythos phase is something to check on and the attack trigger, which are yes, both during the enemy phase. But I do think ultimately um, the enemy phase and the attack trigger are different enough that we can look at them if those situations do arise. And then last but not least, we got the horror damage. Actually last and probably close to least. I mean, it is a little bit better than like the mythos phase to me, but it's only the level three one, which means it's like, it's less good. Like we're gonna be, I have a hard enough case for level one mind wipe for the majority of my decks. So the level three one is like a big ask. So it's kind of like the least value, but what it does is it essentially means you can reduce an enemy's, um, here, let's go back to the next one so you can see. It, re it reduces the chosen enemy's damage and horror values by one. So in order to get a point on this scale for horror and damage, it essentially means you can ignore that enemy for the turn. So you can move three times and it's not gonna attack you. You could do investigate three times and it's not gonna attack you. We're gonna be looking at that for the impact of level two mind wipe. Now, I will also say this is my own rating system. This is like, I'm sure tons of people, you might disagree with me. Uh, I'm a very harsh critic when it comes to how good a card can be. I want a card to work 100% of the time. And if at any point I feel like I'm not getting the full value of that card, to me, it's garbage. So, well, not gar garbage is a tough word, but like, I would rather play something else. So when I'm looking at this mind wipe, we're gonna be breaking down all the creatures from the entire Dunnish Legacy cycle. And we're gonna be looking at them as a, uh, on this rating scale and my thoughts on them. So you can disagree in the comments. I'd love to hear more, uh, but I think I got everything kind of covered here, at least for the Dunwich Legacy. And we'll look at each cycle if we continue with this series for how to do them. I originally was gonna do all of this at once, but then I realized that there's enough work in one cycle that this is a video all in itself. So why don't we dive in and start looking at enemies one by one and I'll give my quick thoughts on them. So 
First up here we got the Thrall from Bishop's Thralls and the scenarios Extracurricular Activity and Where Doom Awaits. Uh, I think that uh, I'm rating all of these out of five. I think the usefulness rating for Mind Wipe level one and even level three as a one out of five for the Thrall. It has Retaliate, so being able to say no to the Retaliate is like, two is a lot, is not too possible, like not too impossible for the majority of people. But maybe you just want to, like, you're fighting as Jim Culver, and you're fighting with three, and you just got to, like, take three shots at this guy and hope you don't miss, right? Like, so there, there's some cases where that the, getting rid of the Retaliate on this two-attack minion is good. Uh, however, I do think using Mind Wipe to get rid of Retaliate is not a bad use of Mind Wipe, and I think it should be a good consideration. I do think ultimately, though, for Thrall, it's not too exciting. Horror damage three, uh, as you can see, uh, horror damage for the level three one, it gets it down to zero, but I don't think it's enough to bump it up one more level for usefulness. Wizard of Yogg Sothoth is also in the set Bishop's Thralls, also an extra curricular activity in where Doom awaits. Uh, he has only the Mythos phase trigger here, which is when the engage investigator draws a hex or a packed card, he attacks that investigator. This, um, can work, this this can actually be good. Um, maybe not so much in Where Doom Awaits because the Mythos deck for that one is like so chunky, but the um, an extra curricular activity, there's a lot of hex or packs and just being able to not get attacked by them if someone's still engaged with the guy in the Mythos phase makes this enough for it's a one out of five usefulness rating. I wanna just say right now, expect ones and zeros for the majority of these cards because I think at this point in the game, Mind Wipe wasn't that good, but like especially in like Forgotten Age, it's gonna be better. We're gonna compare these scenarios with each video that I make, done which of course we'll have nothing to uh, compare it to. So what's next in this one? Oh, Whipper Wills from the set, Whipper Wills. Uh, so it's in three scenarios for the, um, for Dunwich Legacy, extracurricular, extracurricular activity, blood on the altar and undimension and unseen. Uh, so, what does this guy have? It has aloof, so there's a mark for aloof there. It also has uh, each investigator at Whippoorwill's location gets minus one to each of their stats. So, I would say that yes, um, Mind Wipe is a relevant text there. Uh, of course, uh, you're gonna, like you're going to be saying, but Justin, it's only two attack. That's not too hard to kill. But he essentially has three attack, and like. Just using this guy to just blank a Whippoorwill, like, is not a bad use of it. Like, it's not like, like it's not like a five star, but I do think from what we've seen so far, Whippoorwill's probably the best use of Mind Wipe uh, of the creatures that we've talked about so far, or the enemies, rather. Uh, it also can stop the horror and damage at level three, but the one, uh, the three rating here is mostly from the relevant text and also the free um, engage that can go with the aloof. Agents of Yog sothoth from the set is the Yithian Observer. So uh, this guy has a horror damage three and also an attack trigger that you can stop. When he attacks you, discard one card at random from your hand. If you cannot, it, uh, he deals plus one damage and plus one horror for this attack. Uh, one out of five rating, uh, because essentially if you play Mind Wipe to stop that effect, uh, you're essentially just discarding the Mind Wipe. Like, that's what it is. So you're not choosing a card at random. You're just saying, hey, Mind Wipe, I'm discarding you and paying a resource for the process. Is that worth it? Uh, I'm going to say no. I think it's just a one out of five usefulness. I do think this gets better with the level three. I think this is the first one where it's actually kind of relevant. Um, because then you just, it's basically just a dodge you paid three experience for. But as a dodge you paid three experience for really more than a one out of five in terms of usefulness? I don't think so, I don't think so. Oh, a two, it's incredible. So, we got the monster here from Naomi's crew. This guy has Retaliate, and after he attacks you, lose one resource. Uh, he also only has one damage, so we got that horror damage uh, Toka pip marked in there. Uh, and Retaliate, I think Retaliate is good. Uh, as I said, I think Retaliate is like, a pip all in itself, uh, sorry, a point all of itself <clears throat> for the, the usefulness for Mind Wipe. Um, this one's also nice because if you miss, he will retaliate and then his attra attack trigger will hit you. 
So if you use your mind wipe on this guy, like you're kind of just brawling close to the values. You're not like Mark Harrigan or Tony Morgan is attacking this guy at six to two, um, <clears throat> which you probably aren't because neither of them can, <clears throat> excuse me, run mind wipe. Let's drink some water. Um, this makes it so his attack trigger is useful, useless against you, which, sorry, I gotta just <clears throat> clear my throat, so I'm gonna pause the video. So, as I was saying, being able to remove that attack trigger makes his text useless, his retaliate is gone, and useless is useful. I do think ultimately it's still only a 2 out of 5. Um, to me, when I'm looking for a 5 out of 5 or a 4 out of 5 is constant tickings of these, um, this rating scale down at the bottom. And relevant text, I think, is the most important thing. Like, you could argue, once again, yeah, retaliate is relevant text. And, like, this whole thing is relevant text. But it's not, to me, relevant text that is worthwhile for this card to be run over other things. What's next? Ah, O'Banion's Thug. While he's engaged with you, you cannot gain resources. So, relevant text. Which you could spend a resource and a card to gain a resource. Doesn't seem too good, does it? So this is our first, I think this is our first zero of all the enemies we've talked about so far. Um, yeah, uh, the, this horror damage, when I'm looking at it for that level three one, it has to deal no damage. Even if you did this one, you're still taking one damage, which is not really <clears throat> exciting enough for me to warrant uh, a star from that one at all, or even just a check mark for the rating scale. So, Banning Slug, 0 out of 5. Rats! Ah, the classic rats. Another 0 out of 5. I'm not going to say... Sorry, Swarm of Rats, really, from the set rats. We just call these guys rats, though. Uh, 0 out of 5. Uh, if you want to pay 3 experience to not take damage from this guy, uh, don't do it, is my advice. If you want to, you have much better things like just spending an action to kill the rat. Okay! Our first four. Whoa. All right. We got Conglomeration of Spheres. My most hated enemy in the entirety of Arkham Horror, the card game. One attack, six health, four evade. Uh, Prey, Lowest Brain, Hunter. After you perform an attack against the Conglomeration of Spheres using a melee card, discard that card. So, if your goon is fighting with a, uh, a machete or any melee weapon like say like Silas Marsh using his harpoon, it's done. On one attack, it's just gone. Which makes this guy really hard to kill, especially when he could show up as the first scenario and you probably, like you could have some guns, you could have a 45 automatic or something else, but <clears throat> uh, this guy still just requires so much upkeep to get rid of, like so many, so many actions to get rid of. So if uh, your mystic plays this mind wipe, and takes this guy's relevant text to nothing, you can just kill him normally, just with a machete. And I think that's like, this relevant text is scaling a bit more. I think this guy is the first four out of five, four <clears throat> mind wipe. Okay. Servant of the Lurker. He has an attack trigger. I don't even remember what this guy does. When he attacks you, discard the top two cards of your deck. Zero out of five, for its usefulness because do you really want to spend i mean there could be cases where you like you're killed by that um yog soth off treachery card that deals damage to you if your deck runs out but at the same time like that's so fringe that it's not gonna really even be a thing so zero out of five for turn of the lurker even the level three one, bring him down to one damage and one horror. Do you really want to be spending three experience, a card and a resource to do that? Not really. Not really, to just take one damage and one horror from this guy. Zero out of five. Okay, we're on to the grappling horror from the Essex County Express. So uh, this guy has some usefulness ready. Uh, while you're engaged with grappling horror, you cannot move. So that's the relevant text that this gets rid of. Also horror and damage. I do think on its own, the level one one, even just to like, cause there are gonna be times in Essex County Express where you need to move right freaking now. And just being able to ignore this guy's text, take a hit and not get defeated 
is probably good enough for this to be a two out of five uh, rating scale for its usefulness but I don't think it's reliable enough to put this into the three or four, like being able to reliably get rid of a whip or will, or just deal with a whip or will or that conglomeration of spheres. I still think it's just a two out of five for how useful it is. Of course, I'll say again, if you disagree, more power to you. I stand by these ratings. I do think that this is like a true, I'm looking at this just completely as like just bare bones analytically that I can as like how the, how the enemy is, where they sit in the scenario. And I do think that two out of five is pretty fair for this guy. It's It might save your life once, but other times you're just gonna look at this mind wipe and be like, great, I've done it. I have a mind wipe in my hand. Oh, a sad face useful, usefulness rating. That is not good. So uh, just a reminder that uh, mind wipe wipes their text box except for their traits. So that means it gets rid of this guy's victory. So you could kill him and congratulations, he goes in the discard pile. And that one experience you spent on, that one experience you said on mind wipe, essentially ate one of your other experiences. Usefulness, uh, a smile, sorry, a sad face for the usefulness is still just a zero in my mind. But um, it's just be aware that this guy's like <clears throat> not good to use mind wipe on. He doesn't even have relevant text. He has nothing. He's just, don't ever mind wipe this guy. Uh, all right, Acolyte. Uh, after it enters play, place one Doom on it. You can stop the damage he gives you with mind wipe three, but still just a zero out of five. He does nothing. This, this does nothing against Acolyte. And you might be asking Justin, why the heck are you looking at Acolyte and rats when we know mind wipe's not good at them? It We have to, we have to set the precedence for this series. If we want to delve too deep, baby, we got to delve deep. We got to look at every card, every enemy, every non-elite enemy. Wizard of the Order spawns any empty location, retaliate. At the end of the Mythos phase, place one Doom on him. There's a Mythos phase thing here, but we're really looking at the retaliate. Four attack, it, even your goons will miss on four attack. So having just like them not worry about retaliate, I mean, goons are going to have more health than horror, or than sanity rather. So like, they'll be fine if this guy retaliates on them, but if you can just be like, swing away, uh, Tony, just, that is not enough that like, this at least gets a one out of five usefulness. Yeah, once again, just one out of five. Like it's not great, but like this is a case where you can actually like make a case for this card. All right, uh, so we got Servant of Many, Mouths, Many Mouths from Blood on the Altar. Uh, this guy has Retaliate, 3 attack, but we have a sad face for the usefulness rating because after you defeat him, you get to discover a clue at any location. So if you want to spend an experience, a resource, and a card to not discover a clue at a location after you kill this guy, be my guest, but I... That's how I feel. Just a little sad face. It's not worth it. Sad face out of 5. Hunting Night Gaunt from Blood on the Altar for the Dunwich Legacy. So... He has Hunter, and while attempting to evade him, double the negative modifier of each revealed Chaos token. Um, this, I think, is very relevant text. This guy could, like, you could reasonably give this guy a three, and if you did, for its usefulness, if you did, I wouldn't, like, scream and shout at you. Uh, you you're a Mystic, so you're probably, I mean, but it's a level one Mystic, so the level one one could be taken by off-class Mystics, but... Um, that text for the negative modifier can sometimes just leave you in a bad place. This guy also should have the horror damage three pip uh, checked in for the rating scale, um, but I must have just forgot that, you know. Uh, but it's I think that is also relevant. This guy could I, I'm still happy with the two because like generally you want to kill as opposed to evade, and like this guy's not too hard to kill, but he's very hard to evade. So is it really useful to use your mind wipe against him? Maybe in solo. I'm not looking at this as solo, I'm looking at this as like two-handed up, or two-handed solo and up. Um, but I do think, I think this is, this is fine against it, a two out of five for Hunting Night Gone. Oh baby, another four. We got the Brood of Yog sothoth otherwise known as the card that when it was spoiled, everyone was like, oh my god, Mind Wipe has a target, we've done it. So, this gets rid of massive and relevant text. It does also have victory which I'm going to get to in a second. But the Brood of Yog sothoth gets plus one Investigator Health and cannot be damaged or attacked except by using the ability on the Esoteric Formula. 
That means that if this guy has one damage marked on him and you mind wipe in, he's just dead. It doesn't matter about anything else. This guy goes into the discard pile, not the victory pile. So you lose a victory, but the whole goal of the undimensioned and unseen scenario is to defeat like five of these guys if you did really good on the <laughs> blood on the altar. Like usually you're fighting three or four, but it's just something that if you can, if you're getting overwhelmed or you're not feeling like super confident going into Undimension and Unseen. Mind Wipe is not a bad purchase. Um, it clears the massive, which we're not looking at this one for, which I mean, like, it's not really a thing for why this card has a four. I think this card is just, like, super good against the Brood of Yog sothoth in terms of just, like, pressing a button to kill an enemy that you need to kill for the thing. Yeah. You could draw it again, so just be aware of that. This isn't like a permanent solution, but I do think this is a solution enough that warrants a four out of five here for Root of Yogg Sothoth. I think it's Mind Wipe is actually good against this guy. All right, Lupine Thrall. This guy's Hunter and Retaliate, so um, he gets the Retaliate trigger, four attack and three health, which means you're going to need to take a lot of attacks against this guy as opposed to like the Wizard of the Order, which you can only kill in one. Uh, one attack, this guy's going to probably need two, unless you have some other shenanigans. So I think this is a two out of five. Getting rid of Retaliate is strong. Uh, I'll say it again. Just saying no to Retaliate is super sweet. And this guy is relevant enough that he's a two out of five for Mind Wipe rating. Avian Thrall. Oh, we got another sad face. How sad. So when he's being attacked, uh, when he's being attacked using a ranged firearm or spell asset, he gets minus three fight. So that's a positive relevant text. You don't want to wipe that. Um, I do have here, this, this guy as well, the horror damage should be checked for this one, but I didn't check it because don't mind wipe him. This guy also should have it. I missed it. I'm, I, I guess even I forgot about the horror damage three as I was doing this. Uh, the horror damage three for this one, I don't think is enough to bump this guy up to three. I think two is a fine rating for him. This guy, definite sad face. Do not mind wipe him. Do not, because you probably have spells that you're going to try to kill him with, and you'd much rather fight this guy at two than five and not spend a sick-ass card to do it. Sick-ass card here is just to use the term for an experience card. I'm not saying mind wipe level one or level three is, in fact, sick. Okay, what's next? All right, we're on the second last scenario. Where doom awaits. So we got Devotee of the Key. So, this guy has enemy phase. At the end of the enemy phase, he moves once towards Sentinel Peak. If he's already at Sentinel Peak, discard it and add two Doom to the current agenda. Um, yeah. One out of five. There's probably a fringe case that you could make where it stops this guy from moving. And he just stays engaged with the goon. And then the goon kills him next turn. I love that dude's art, by the way. You could make that case... And I would look at that case and be like, yeah, that means it's probably a one out of five usefulness. That sounds not too useful, but at least it has, it does something against the guy. So one out of five. Craze Shuggeth. So when he attacks, so this guy's an attack trigger thing. When he attacks, if this would attack would defeat an investigator, that investigator is instead killed. Yeah. So I gave this guy a two out of five for usefulness. You might be thinking, hey, Justin, uh, this because you save a dude's life. That's probably at least a three, right? I don't think so. I think there's going to be a time where if you're running Mind Wipe and Craze Shuggeth was going to kill you, you use this and don't die. You're just defeated normally. And I'll just say, man, I'm glad you were defeated. <laughs> like, I'm glad you were defeated instead of killed, but like, you don't really get to do much more. Like, you can use it on, like, saving someone else, but now the Craze Shuggeth is your problem, and your Mind Wipe is gone. I don't think this card's bad to use Mind Wipe on. I just think it's not, like, crazy useful. Two out of five. Okay. Interstellar Traveler. Zero out of five. Nothing relevant. Cool. <laughs> we'll go on to the next one. Nothing relevant to say here. He does nothing. He, my wife does nothing against this guy. Yithian Star Seeker. We got Retaliate. Three attack. Four. So you're going to need to spend two attacks on him. He also has an attack trigger when he attacks an investigator with more than ten cards in his or her discard pile. Place one do on him. Yeah. This guy reasonably could be a two. 
it reasonably could be a two usefulness rating. I think for me, settling on a one is the fact that at this point in the campaign, three attacks not too scary. And like, once again, you're asking the question, but Justin, I might not be in a goon in my mind wipe deck. And then I'm gonna say to that, okay, so you're just gonna, how are you killing this guy? You're gonna kill him with a spell? Your spell's probably good enough to be on par with the attack from a scenario eight goon. So if you're mind wiping him, you gotta be asking why, and if it's to get rid of the retaliate and then the attack trigger, I think that ultimately is just still just a one out of five usefulness. If someone did this on uh, a Yethian Star Seeker while I was playing, I'd be like, cool, neat, all right, th that's nice. It's a one out of five, just nothing too exciting. And I think that's our last enemy. Uh, so before we get to the scenarios, once again, I just wanna say, I know I'm a very harsh critic. I am a very harsh critic and uh, that's just how I am. Uh, let's look at the scenarios individually, and I'll talk about the uh, averages for this. So, um, for the majority of these scenarios, I looked at the um, average uh, rating of all of these. I rounded up for the majority of them, and I sometimes, for some of them, awarded a bonus rating for it. So, um, round up, obviously, if they're, you know, round upable, round down, if they're round downable. That's just how we approached this one here, just to give you my insight. So, extracurricular activity sat at a 1.5 average uh, through all of these guys, which um, I bumped up to a 2. I do think the Whipper Will is good enough to get rid of this. And the Retaliate on the Thrall, especially if this is your first scenario, which you can only get this uh, as... Father, um, Father uh, Mateo for their first scenario, at least printed right now anyway, I think. I'm not sure if there's anyone else who gets starting experience. I don't know. It's not, it's not my job. <laughs> I, it's, I, that's Travis and Bryn are my database that I pull for that. I get into their brain, look at the file, and they tell me uh, that kind of information. I'm the, I'm the scenario guy. That's the stuff I know. Uh, yeah, but... Um, that's uh, what we're looking at here. I think it's a two out of five for um, extracurricular activity. It's going to be more use, less useful than average, but still useful enough to, uh, there might be a chance where you'll look at this mind wipe and be like, this is just what I need right now. Okay. The house always wins. I gave this one a one out of five, rounding down from a 1.2 average. The conglomeration of spheres is, is really good. It's really good against it. Um, but... The mobster, it's also like, it's fine. It stops to retaliate and stops you from losing resources. But the three zeros here means that Mind Wipe is going to be dead more than it is good. So because of that, we're dropping uh, this one down to a one. We could also argue reasonably that um, because Conglomeration of Spheres has a 66% chance of showing up over the Servant of the Lurker, whatever that guy's name is, uh, this could be a two, and I think like you could you could argue that. I just think that um, having three dead targets is not great. This guy also the serpent lurker also has victory, which you kind of want. So I just think House of Always Wins is just a one out of five in terms of usefulness. I think you're not gonna like walk away feeling like a champion from that one. There's only one enemy, and he's elite in Miskatonic Museum. That's a sad face. That's a zero out of five. Sucks, doesn't it? Up next, we got the Isaac County Express. I think just a one star. Uh, 0 0.75 was the average for these guys. Um, yeah. Don't have much to say. Grappling Horror, you can save your life. Um, the Retaliate on Wizard of the Order can be good if you need to kill him, especially if he has Doom on them, but you're going to die for some reason. But I still think just one out of five. As you can tell, I, I, I said it and I'll say it again. I judge harshly, so... You might be thinking, but Justin, this is probably a three. No, it's a one. So let's move on. Blood on the altar. Whoa, what a surprise. Another one. This one was kind of tough for me when I came to my rating for it. Uh, it's It was averages at a 1.4. Um, and like the hunter, of the, 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 the night gaunt and the mobster are good. The whippoorwill's the, one of the better enemies to do this. The thug... And the Servant of Many Mouths, um, you don't want to do the Servant of Many Mouths, and the Thug is just like a useful spend of your Mind Wipe. Uh, also, like, not even to mention that the Mobster and the Thug can just, like, not be in it, just depending on how your <clears throat> playthrough of the campaign went. Just something to be uh, aware of. 
I just think that overall, Mind Wipe's just going to be a, a one-star card in your hand in this scenario. Maybe two. Maybe on like a, if, I, if I was feeling happier when I was doing this, I would have given this a two. But I think Blood on the Altar is just a one. Hey, okay, this should be no surprise to anybody here. If we look at the scenario rating, this card's actually like good. It had a 2.3 rating, um, but instead of rounding down for this one, I felt like it was worthy enough to um, go up into a three, a three star rating for this. The Brood of Yogg Soth Hoth, it's a great button to press. You're going to see a lot of them, and that's why I bumped it up a whole level. Um, the Avian Thrall as a zero out of five is uh, a little bit bringing this average down quite a, a bit. Uh, the Lupine Thrall, as I said, is we're going to require two attacks, so being able to eat that Retaliate for two attacks is nice. And the Whipper is a cute use of it, but still just a three out of five. Um, the downside of this one that stops this one from being a four for me personally is that um, when you look at the whole big picture, um, killing the Brood of Yogg-Soth with a Mind Wipe is ultimately losing you out on experience and they could come back. So it's not like to me like huge and that avian thrall being a dead enemy if you're just like dealing with that and you have a um a mind wipe in your hand um it's going to be a problem because like it does nothing and you just have like this dead card sitting there not to mention the fact that like in this scenario you're going to be want to be using your mind wipes on the brood of yogg santhoth so you're less likely to use it on the whippoorwill so that three out of five really kind of becomes a zero out of five in this scenario just, just some thoughts for why this guy isn't a four. I do think it's good. I do think this is like the first scenario and the only scenario in the Dunnets Legacy that I would say Mind Wipe is a good card. So to me, a three out of, a one out, a one out of, a zero to five is bad. A one is not good. Two is fine. Three is good. Four is great. And five is like the best card that you could play. So I do think three is, this is like the first scenario it's good in. Holy crap, that's a lot of enemies. So where Doom awaits? Um, the Conglomeration of Spheres and the Servant of the Lurker, if that is in fact his real name, uh, they are both potentially in this set. This one had a 1.4 average. And you could argue, Justin, we should bump this up to a two here, but I just think the Thrall's not that impressive, the Wizard's not that impressive, the Devotee of the Key's not that impressive. Um, and while the Lupine Thrall and the Kray Shoggoth can have their moments, it's not enough to like make it like super exciting. And the, um, the Conglomeration and the Servant, once again, if that is his real name, uh, both being, like, potential, um, makes it so that, like, if I think if you knew you were going to have them, you could argue that this is a two. But I think, generally, where Doom Awaits is a one for its usefulness for Mind Wipe. Also because, well, the Mythos deck is huge, so you never know what you're going to get. You could just draw Avian Thrall, Thrall, Devotee of the Key. And then you're like, great, my Mind Wipe does nothing. So... I think even that knocks this one down <clears throat> to a 1 out of 5 for me. And what should be to no surprise, anyone, anywhere, uh, Lost in Time and Space also has a 1 for its usefulness. The Conglomeration of Spheres, I think, is still the best. Um, so you're going to ask yourself, is this one enemy worth more? than these other four cards that Mind Wipe really doesn't do anything against. And if you answer that question and you say yes, run Mind Wipe. For me, it's a no. It's a one out of five. I'll have better things to deal with the conglomeration of spheres. Even if you look at the numbers and you want to look at it like with true deck building in it, um, the conglomerate, congl oh my God. The congl, oh my God, I've just, conglomeration of spheres, I lost that word. The conglomeration of spheres gets worse as the campaign goes. So his four out of five usefulness is probably more of like a two or a three in Lost in Time and Space. But if we're looking at just the text of the card, Conglomeration of Spheres is a four out of five. So we have to ask the question now, how does this guy look for this? So as you can see, we have a bunch of scenarios where I think Mind Wipe is not good. One where I'd say it's outright bad. And then we have one where it's not great, but still fine. Uh, and then we have one where it's good. I guess two is a fine. It's a fine card there. And then like two, uh, on Dimension, it's a good card. Now you might also be saying, Justin, it also commits for a brain and a fist. Cool. 
So do a lot of other cards in the game. Let's just be real. We're delving too deep. We're going to look at just, we're going to nitpick every aspect of if Mind Wipe is good or not against enemies. And this is a series that if you guys want to see more of, I'll, I will do more of. Uh, and I would love discourse in the comments as well. I would love to talk to you guys about this. I did have a lot of fun making this video and like rating the cards was a good time for me. Uh, so if you want to see more of this, if you want me to continue this into Carcosa, uh, all the way up to Innsmouth, maybe even Edge of the Earth by the time that this, uh, by the time that I get to that episode, it'll be out and released by then. Let me know in the comments. And if there's any other cards you want to see me to delve too deep into, like break down the card and look at what, how useful it could be. Or like, I know I talked in the past about a, a video where I would break down the shroud values of locations or even like mythos decks to see what's the challenge in those mythos decks. Let me know if you want to see that content because I will make it. Um, thanks for watching everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.